So uh, our next entrepreneur we'll be presenting is Tim Mullen from Intheon. Great, it's exciting to be here. Um, I'm excited for a number of reasons. Um, one of the really exciting things today is that we're seeing a convergence between computing, machine learning, and uh, neurotechnology that could enable us to really radically improve both cognitive function and capability, but also critical brain health issues. And one thing is that this is a vision that's been pretty long in the making. Um, and so we have to ask ourselves, what catalysts do we need today that could help us spark a thriving neurotech ecosystem uh, with lots of ubiquitous con commercial and, and clinical applications within the next five years? So I think that one of the greatest impediments to rapid growth is reinvention of the wheel. Um, this happens all the time in technology, and we need scientists and entrepreneurs uh, and also you know, established companies to be able to rapidly build on existing validated science, methodological uh, techniques, um, and insights rather than needing to expend time and resources on the process of reinventing the wheel. So prior to Intheon, members of our team spent years developing uh, very widely used software for EEG, and, uh, and other neural signal analysis, as well as brain-computer interfacing, uh, including the EEG lab ecosystem. Um, but at Intheon, what we're doing is taking deep domain knowledge um, and best practices about how to decode signals, um, basically how to understand uh, what the underlying neural states are and mental states are from biosignals, and building that into a cloud-scalable middleware platform that will enable developers and researchers both to access essentially a lab's worth of brain and body signal analysis and state decoding uh, that can be deployed into the cloud, and then easily integrate this into applications and devices essentially anytime or anywhere. So sort of like uh, you know, AWS for the mind or middleware for the mind, if you will, to use a bit of an analogy. Um, so again, eliminating the reinvention of the wheel. Um, and what's exciting about it is that R&D engineers and scientists can also build on this technology. Um, they can prototype and test their own pipelines within our ecosystem uh, in the NeuroPipe suite. And we're also building capabilities to store and search and analyze large quantities of neurophysiological data in this system and share data and pipelines with collaborators or uh, contribute to the ecosystem. Uh, so just a few examples I'll spin through of how our platform is being used currently. Um, this includes identifying new cognitive and clinical biomarkers um, that are relevant to, to brain health, for instance, uh, mild traumatic brain injuries, schizophrenia, ADHD. This is all on the clinical research side. Uh, we're not a diagnostic uh, solution. Um, second to that would be, just to give you an example here. Um, oops, let me go back to that. And so this is just an example. If we could just have the audio on this slide. So. Alexa, ask Neuroscout for my average relaxation level over the last five minutes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hold it up so she can respond. Your average relaxation level over the last five minutes was 36%. Not bad, but maybe you want to try taking a little break? <laughs> so that was my wife, by the way, and she had a little cough that day. But um, what was neat about that is that her brain is being measured. You almost wouldn't know. It's with sensors inside her ear just like a pair of headphones, and she can just talk to Alexa, and Alexa, Alexa talks to our Neuroscale platform and says, what's my state right now? So this is kind of bringing that tech into the real world. Um, another example, um, so this is, uh, uh, we're working with NASA and the UND Human Space Flight Laboratory to develop uh, ways of assessing and predicting changes in uh, human performance in um, crew members who are in these uh, lunar Martian habitats. Um, and the idea is if we can be able to predict future changes in their cognitive performance, perhaps we can help NASA and others develop countermeasures that will enable long duration human spaceflight exploration. Um, and so other companies are also using our platform for human performance assessment in like say athletes and executives and other elite performers. Um, related to that as an example of you know, real time uh, closed loop uh, um, 
monitoring of brain activity and brain computer interfacing. So this is an application built by some developers that use the NeuroScale platform to create an immersive uh, neurofeedback experience um, where they can uh, levitate these orbs based on actually changing network dynamics. So we're targeting specific circuits in the brain um, and using that to modulate this. Of course, neurostimulation could be another form of feedback. Um, going from the individual to the group, here we're measuring activity from hundreds of people in New York and Los Angeles, tracking similarities in their brain activity in real time through the cloud, pseudo real time, seconds. And um, they're actually able to, as they synchronize their neural activity, or, or the neural activity becomes more similar, they can uh, modulate these rings. But what we're really interested in here is looking at things like group flow states, for instance. So the idea is, can we improve things like team dynamics, for instance, by tracking similarities in biophysical states in individuals who are operating together within a team and uh, use that to, to improve that, that team function? So we're exploring that with other partners. So just a few other neat ideas. And just one last example that is kind of near and dear to me is um, entertainment, art, experiences. Um, this is a festival uh, called Mozart in the Mind that uh, I direct um, in San Diego. And Mickey Hart there is sort of doing this rhythm experience, and I'm flying through his brain in VR. We're able to share in real time brain mapping of his, his, his brain uh, with you know, hundreds of people in the audience who can participate in this experience. Um, so just moving forward from that. Can we just advance to the next slide? And this keeps doing something that I don't know. OK. So just to briefly touch. The platform is not only for developers, but also researchers. It's being used over the last year. It's been adopted by over 200 institutions in 37 countries. They're using this for their science. And what we really see this as is an opportunity to close the chasm between science and real world application. Innovations that are happening in science could almost in real time be adopted and field tested in industry if everyone is using the same technology platform. Um, and so that's one of our, our real visions and dreams. So I'll just leave with this quick spotlight question, which is, you saw a lot of applications there. We're a platform, so we support multiple different use cases. But we want to know, what brain, mind, state do you think is the most important um, uh, for us to be able to measure reliably? And how could this be used um, to uh, create the greatest positive impact for humanity within the next uh, 10 years? So. That's my question to you, and our goal is to help you realize that vision and others to realize that vision through our platform. So if you're interested in helping us with that, please reach out. Thank you. Thank you.